Well, welcome to our discipleship chat. Uh, today we'll be going over heart-based discipleship a little bit. I will continue some more um, next week. But before I begin, I want to show you again our logo, which you might have imprinted in your brain right now, and if so, great. If not, here is what I'm going for. So notice that there's head-based, heart-based, and hands-based discipleship, and they all come together in Christ Jesus. We need all of these things to pick up our cross and follow God. Now, head-based discipleship is right thinking, so right learning. Um, heart-based discipleship is right feeling. And hands-based discipleship is right doing, which involves right speaking and right acting. So walking the walk and talking the talk. So also, I want to talk about the data trends that I have for today. Um, thank you to everyone who posted on the website. So for which one you wanted to learn um, <clears throat> first, it was heart, heart in the lead. Um, and head and hands go back and forth quite a bit for what's first. And then looking at what you want next, it was heart again in the lead. Um, but let's take that out because we'll grow for that first and then it will be hands next. Now I might do hands after we do a heart bit. I might not, I might put out, um, another survey, but that's what we're going for today. We're going for the, the heart-based discipleship. And again, heart-based discipleship is right feeling. So it's praying, it's meditating, it's sitting and listening for God. It's enjoying creation. Right now, the sun is shining. The sun is hot. <laughs> and the wind is blowing and things are blooming and it's beautiful. So the heart-based person looks at that and encounters God and that. And so it, it can be aesthetic too. But I wanted to start today with something very, very simple. Now, before I do that, I do want to say um, heart-based discipleship and its excess can go towards narcissism and it can go towards um, arrogance, which leans, all, all these things lean more on insecurity than security in God and who he's created you to be. And that's why the heart needs the head and the hands because you need the head to say, right, I see what you're feeling and what you think the spirit's calling you to do, but we should test these spirits. Let's call a friend and ask them and listen to what they're saying. Let's get out your Bible and read it, read some commentaries and see if that's based in fact. Um, but the hands person would say, yeah, that's nice, but what are you doing with it? Are you speaking that inspiration into the world? Are you living that inspiration into the world? So since this is a chat, um, grab whatever drink you have. I don't know what the weather's going to be like when you're watching this, but right now it's hot. So I got some water. So excuse me. Mm. So hot. Right. I guess you could say less than one in heart. <clears throat> and this might be a bit odd or counterintuitive, but it's all about breathing in prayer. I know someone out there is probably like, oh, so frustrating. That's not heart, that's hands. And you turn this off. Um, no, actually, you need to remember to keep your heart connected to your mind and your body. And breathing and prayer is part of it. So when we take enough breathing and measured breathing and prayer, it slows down our thoughts that could be racing either because you're excited or you're scared, whatever it is that you're bringing before God, um, insecurity, joy, your mind's racing, you're feeling something and your thoughts are running wild. So it, breathing gets oxygen to your brain and helps you slow down, but also it helps you remember your body, that you are a whole created person, that though you are encountering God right now, you are not leaving your body behind and going into some esoteric encounter with God. It's your whole self is supposed to be with God right now. So breathing helps with that. Also, um, for those of us who have um, mental health concerns or issues, you know 
that you need to breathe whenever you're feeling big feelings, that that helps to calm your emotions down. So breathing is what we're going for today. Um, I will note too, now that I have the water in front of me, that it's reminding me, sometimes when we feel big feelings or we have something that seems like a pretty big inspiration from God, or we're just really down and depressed, um, we might be tempted to grab onto a vice of sorts to help us feel better. As odd as it might sound, but completely rational, might I suggest that before you go too far down that track, you not only pause to reach out to a friend um, to help confirm what you're thinking or feeling or even challenge it if it's so negative about yourself, but you also have a glass of water. I know, weird, but water and hydration are very important for our mental health and well-being and our, our brain and our whole body impacts our emotions and what we're feeling. So dehydration can mess with you. Um, so again, I mentioned before, like maybe you feel something in prayer and you're so excited and you're about to run off and just do it. And you realize I'm over caffeinated. I need to pause, pump the brakes and see if this is real or not. Water is helpful. If you get to be too sad or depressed, um, yeah, water. Water can help a bit. Now don't go excessive and drink way too much water and thin your blood out. That's not good. But think about how much water have you had today as opposed to caffeine. So seven minutes in, let's get to the prayer that I want to focus on today, which is about breathing. Now I've mentioned this before um, in other, um, I can't, I can't remember if it was a welcome or not or an intercessory prayer, but I mentioned before the Jesus prayer. Now with the Jesus prayer, what you do is in your head, you say, Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, or you can fill in the blank. I'll get to that in a second. It doesn't have to be a sinner. Um, so you breathe in and say in your mind, Lord Jesus Christ, breathe out, son of God, breathe in, have mercy on me, breathe out a sinner or whatever you're feeling. Now, why did I start with this one? This one is great for centering. That is calming your mind and your heart and your body down to just be still and listen to what God is telling you to do. I do this prayer when I am preparing a sermon. I do this prayer when I get overwhelmed, when I'm hiding from my children in the pandemic maybe. Um, I do this prayer all the time. I've been in the Farsi Fellowship meeting before where I've seen things going down, encouraging or discouraging. And it's not just a Farsi Fellowship, I should say. It's it's every church, but I, this came to mind first. And there's been times where people have asked for prayer from me and they want a word from God. It's like, <laughs> well, no pressure. <laughs> but I do the Jesus prayer and I think, okay, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner who needs to speak truth right now. And I ask God, where are you right now in this room? And speak into whatever I think God's saying. Um, I've been in intense situations throughout life, not just at church, where I've used the prayer to calm myself down. Um, I use the prayer to um, get ready for when I do the examine, which I'll mention another time. And what I notice is it gets my whole being in sync. Your, your thoughts can be racing. It's kind of like with my boys. And if you are a parent or encounter children or work with children or just seen a child before, you may know that children tend to run to you with something they have, whether it's good or bad. It could be something awful, like he snatched my toy happening a lot lately or it could be amazing like come look what I did come see what I made that's how we are when we enter into the presence of our divine parents as well we we come to him with come come tell me more about you let's see what you're doing you can run to God too with this happened and it was awful and 
to listen to what God has to say, you have to pause your, your thinking. It's there, but kind of let it go and pace yourself. So that's where the Jesus prayer is incredibly helpful. So I said you can have other things at the end. With the Jesus prayer, and this isn't mine. This is old. This is Eastern Orthodox. I want to say early, early, early church old. Um, you can add to the end the um, statement of whatever you're feeling. So Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. I'm so excited to be in your presence today, or I'm actually really nervous to enter your presence today, or this is really hurting my feelings, or I'm lonely in the pandemic, whatever it is. And you just sit and it's a centering prayer and you say it repeatedly until your heart is ready to move on into another prayer. So I would suggest for this week, trying to say the Jesus prayer whenever you want to encounter God and say, have mercy on me, I'm whatever you are in that minute. Um, also, not just a near direct prayer time, but I found it really useful to say the Jesus prayer throughout the day, just to remind myself when I get to be too busy, um, too busy with meetings, too busy with Zoom calls, too busy with trying to balance things with my PhD, too busy trying to figure out what to do with my kids' homework or should we send them back to school or not, so on and so forth to just stop and go, right, where is God right now? Let's center ourselves because if I'm not doing all of this with God, not just for God, with God, then what's the point? And so I say the Jesus prayer then. So let's practice it um, three or four times um, and remember to breathe. So I will say it, but you just say it in your head. So breathe in, Lord Jesus Christ, Breathe out, Son of God. Breathe in. Have mercy on me. Breathe out, a sinner. Breathe in, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on me. Breathe in, a whatever you are. We'll do it one more time. Breathe in, Lord Jesus Christ. Breathe out. Son of God, have mercy on me. Someone trying to do discipleship online. <laughs> that's, that's where I am. And then once you've done that a couple times and you feel yourself centered and open to listening to God, it doesn't matter how many times it takes you. If you just sit there doing that, good. Do what you need to do and where you feel the Spirit calling you to do. But whenever you're ready to move on into another prayer, then say in yourself, still kind of keeping that centered, and pace the, the Lord's Prayer. So, that's the Jesus Prayer. And if that's enough for you this week, then feel free to pause this video and go on about your week. If you feel like, okay, I need a little bit more than that, keep listening. So using um, the Jesus prayer first to center yourself and bring you into a time of worship with God. Um, I use this when I'm reading scripture. I use this for preparing for sermons, but it's something called Lectio Divina. And it is simply reading the scripture and wanting God to prompt in you what he wants you to notice from it. Now, um, I use this in Bible studies sometimes because, especially when I did a mom's Bible study and we had our children crawling all over us, it was good because we, you read it three times and somewhere in one of the times it was read out loud, something came in and people were able to connect with God, even if they have to stop to change a nappy or fix a toy or bring a child back into the room who ran off. It's usually me. <laughs> um, it was helpful. 
but I also use this when I prepare for a sermon. So when I prepare for a sermon, and this is not one size fits all, this is just my pattern that my journey has led me in. When I prepare for a sermon, I get the passage, I read the passage once, and then I read extensively in commentaries in the Greek or Hebrew, as the case may be. I do word studies and I do looking at um, peer reviewed journals on the passage. And then when my head is crammed to bursting, I sit down with the passage and I do Lectio Divina, not asking for God to prompt within me what he wants me to know for me, but what he wants my audience to know. So I sit down with the passage, do Lectio Divina with you in mind with whoever the audience is and say, right, what do you want them to know? Just, just lead this time. And then of course you write the sermon and you <laughs> it's over examples, but you get the, the gist of what you're trying to get across. And then of course you go to do it and you're like, right, well, here you go, God. This is the best that I can do. Um, Holy Spirit, fix it. <laughs> if, it's, if it's a mess, if it's a hot mess, Jesus fix it. Um, right, but anyway, Lectio Divina. So remember, you come in and you do the Jesus prayer until you're ready. You say the Lord's Prayer, and then you read a passage of Scripture. And the first time you read this passage of Scripture, look just for words. So I print it out when I'm doing exegesis, when it's just personal or a Bible study, I just kind of under, underline a word. Um, with your different devices, you can take a screenshot and you can do different colors for underlining. Um, so I do one color first time through, another color the second time through, and a third color going through on my iPad. Um, but just listen for um, the word that comes to you. So I'm going to read a passage now. This is the first part, the first two verses, because I don't have time to do the whole thing, sorry, um, of Psalm 84. So as I read this, just listen for a word, a phrase. Or no, sorry, just a word, not a phrase, just a word, one word. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. So just sit there with a word. Whatever word comes out to you, maybe write it down, highlight it. And then when you're ready, and feel free to pause this video if you're not, but if when you're ready, then read it again for a phrase. So here we go. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Think about what phrase do you feel the Spirit has led you to and reflect on that phrase. Maybe just repeat it to yourself a couple times. And then the last time through, you do a read through focusing on what is God calling me to do? What is God, what is the application of this? Because again, it's your whole body that's being brought into God. So what is your application? So here we go. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. 
My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. What is your conviction of that? What application do you have? Honestly, what I feel called to just from those two verses, and again, there's 12 in that psalm, is just, does my heart and flesh sing for God? Yeah, does it? I try. But I would say, even in the harshest moments, I can get overwhelmed and fly off into a big feeling related to me being overwhelmed, which isn't necessarily in itself wrong as long as it's not destructive. But what does it mean in that moment for my heart and my flesh to sing for joy to the living God? And maybe it's in that moment of just going, God help me. I love you loads. Please help me out. Jesus fix it. Hmm. So that's like Dio Divina. And I would encourage you to breathe until you feel ready um, to move on in your life. Of course, life demands interrupt our prayers all the time. And what I like about the Jesus prayer that I showed you is even if you're interrupted in your prayer time, you can recenter with it and get back into it. Um, it can be used throughout the day. And then after you've done Lectio Divina, maybe you just do the Jesus prayer for a bit writing yourself to go on. So that is lesson one for heart. Whatever you feel called to in your moments of inspiration of seeing and imagining what God wants for you to do, use your head to test the spirits on that one to check your receipts, so to speak, like check the facts, check the data, ask someone for help, ask someone to listen that you trust. But also ask, is there anything that my hands, you know, w walking the walk, talking the talk, could be doing with this? Because, again, it's lovely to experience God in your prayer corner. It's a joy to go into the presence of the Lord, and it can be frightening at first if it's been a long time or never have happened to enter into light. But I promise you, love and joy, your, your heart and your soul will sing. Just abandon all those fears there. And if you need anything at all throughout the week, if you need someone to listen to what God has shown you, to, to check it or to ask, what do I do with this? Or even just to share, hey, God, show me this from one heart person to the other. Like, please, please do. So I pray that that was of use to you. And I will talk to you again next week about heart. Have a blessed week.